Good evening, everyone. It's like, what, 7? Yep, here on Sunday evening. It's a nice, warm, calm Sunday evening here in Houston. And I'm going to do a little uh, show and tell about FTP specifically for our class. <clears throat> so I've got Text Wrangler. I'm back in my Mac where I'm happiest. I have Text Wrangler running with the good old-fashioned blue flax.html, the one I've been working on repeatedly. And uh, I want you to notice there's a little black triangle here in Text Wrangler to indicate that I haven't saved with uh, this particular code yet. I deleted it specifically so that I would have to show you how to do this. So I'm going to go to File. I'm going to go to Save As. I'm going to make sure that this is UTF-8, just like I did with Notepad++. As a matter of fact, since the book says to do this, we'll say with, without view. Oh, yeah, there it is. The UTF-8, without anything written after it, is the, the version we want to use. Uh, again, I'm going to use my desktop. And instead of uh, untitled text, I'm going to call it blue-flax.html. You notice I didn't use spaces. I didn't use underscores. They're all lowercase. I know where I saved it on my desktop and what I've called it, blueflax.html. Um, I don't have to worry about the file extension thing with Text Wrangler like I do with Notepad. So I'm just going to save it. Okay, cool. Uh, you can see that I stole it from the browser here. Okay, Firefox, go away for a moment. And Text Wrangler, go away for a moment. Awesome. Okay, cool. Now I've opened up FileZilla, which you can download from the class webpage. It's free. It runs on both platforms. It's a program specifically made for accessing files on a server. And it doesn't show you any... Uh, special formatting, it doesn't allow you to stream video or anything like that. It's meant just to put files onto and take files off of the web. It's kind of like uh, a delivery service. You can't really do much with, no, you can't do anything with it except take files off and put files onto a server. So you could do the easiest way to connect to your server which I'm gonna, I have a list of everybody's EUID, which is also um, a URL that I've made for everybody. Each person's gonna have his or her own and a password. You're gonna need to send me an email or jewelry an email asking, well, hey, what's my username? What's my password? What's my URL? And we'll ma mail you back that information and you save it. The password is not something you can change, so just copy and paste it from the email that we send you into FileZilla. Um, okay, so instead of using the, the easy tool up here, which you can do, the quick connect bar, I'm actually going to click this button up here and open up the uh, site manager. And I'm going to make a new site, and I'm going to call it jn 74 peakofallpeas.net. Everybody's URL is going to work the same way. Whatever your EUID is, .peakofallpeas.net. As a matter of fact, everybody already has one. So you'll notice that if we go to back to Firefox and I type jn0074.peakofallpeas.net, it actually loads this weird page that says coming soon. It turns out that I've already got, every time I make a URL, every time I make a website on my hosting service, which is DreamHost, they provide this sort of filler page to make sure that there's at least something there when someone goes to it. So let's go back to sites. jn0074.peakofallpeas.net. And for the host, put the exact same thing, jn0074.peakofallpeas.net. And for protocol, change it to SFTP, which is a little bit more secure. For login type, choose normal. And for user, put whatever your EU ID is. And then for the password, put the password that I mailed you guys before. And then you can either hit connect or you can hit OK. If you hit OK, it saves it. And then you can always come back and connect that way. OK. You'll notice that up at the top is some like server related stuff. Over here on the left hand side are all the files on my local computer. Notice that by default it's set on my desktop because that's where I go the most, uh, you know, most frequently. And then over on the right hand side, there's something very important to notice. Notice the folder here, jn0074.peakofolpies.net. That is my website.
Anything that I drag from the left hand side over here up to the right hand side, but I fail to put in this folder, it won't actually be on the web. That's like delivering something to a store but keeping it in the back room. If you don't put it in this folder, it's not available for the world to see. So you have to be sure to do that when it's time to upload files. Okay, so let's actually go in there real quick and I'll show you this quickstart.html is the default page that my browser gets when it goes to my URL. So when I go to jn 074 net, it actually opens up quickstart.html, here I'll show you, without even having to put the file name on the end. So leaving it blank or putting this file name at the end, this is what's known as an index page. And Peekabolpees has set it up so that quickstart.html is actually my index page. You'll notice in the book he talks about index.html. Let me show you real quick. If I rename this on the server, notice what I did. I clicked on it and then left my mouse there for a minute and it let me select it. I'm going to rename this to index.html. Notice that some, the server did something and this changed. Go back to the browser and refresh. It's no, it doesn't see what quickstart.html is anymore because I renamed it. But if I go back to that, just the slash and hit enter, notice it still works. Okay. So in the book, when he's talking about the index page, usually servers call it index.html, like I just did there. But for whatever reason, DreamHost decided that as soon as I make a, uh, a new website, it actually creates this sort of boilerplate page and dumps it in there. I just wanted to demonstrate that it doesn't matter if it's called index.html or quick start, the server is actually going to use it as your index page. Um, that's why that has that magic name. Okay, so let me show you what I can do now to get this thing up on the web. Whoops. So I've got here, sorry about that, I've got here on my desktop a file called blueflax.html. So over on the left hand side is my computer, on the right is the server. So if I click this and then drag it, notice some stuff happens down here telling me it's connecting, some server stuff up here. Now if I go back to my browser and instead of index.html, Notice it doesn't matter, there's no www at the front of the URL. So you just put whatever your EUID is, .net, and anything you've put into that folder with the same name, it's on the web. So if I go to blue-flax.html, there's my page. Now you'll notice that the uh, image didn't show up. So if I go back, well, I don't have that one open anymore. But if you don't actually upload the images that are associated with a particular file, or if in the HTML you use the local uh, file path instead of an absolute file path, then the things have to travel together. I'll do a demo about that a little bit later on. So that's sort of a rundown on how to use uh, FileZilla to FTP files up to the server. Everybody has one of these already. All you got to do is ask me what it is. Okay, if you have any questions, let me know.